Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Abby Bronson from PPMD, and I head up the research strategy program at PPMD, and I'm delighted to be able to moderate this afternoon's webinar. Um, today, we have Tata Basis, um, who is going to be speaking on their phase three program called their trial called Polaris DMD, um, a phase three trial of Edithylamexin, a novel nf kappa inhibitor for Duchenne. Before I introduce our speakers, um, I want to let you know that we'll have time for questions at the end of the talk. We always leave room time, time for you to, to, for us to answer questions. So if you have a question or you need more clarity on something, submit your question in the chat box. We'll answer as many as we have time for in this webinar, and any that we don't get to, we'll make sure that we get to them by email after the webinar is done. This webinar is being recorded, and we'll have it uploaded probably in, you know, three to four days, so you will be able to um, go back and listen to it at a later date if you want to. Now, I get to have the great pleasure of introducing today's speakers. We have um, Joanne Donovan, who is the Chief Medical Officer from Catabasis, and we have Maria Mancini, who is the Vice President of Clinical Operations. And now, I'd like to turn it over to Catabasis. Thank you, Abby. Uh, good afternoon. This is Joanne Donovan. Uh, thank you very much to PPMD for the opportunity to have today's webinar. We are quite excited to share information about Edisolinexant, an NF-kappa B inhibitor, and our Phase three Polaris DMD trial in boys affected by Duchenne. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. So Catabasis is a public company and will be making forward-looking statements today. Today's webinar is going to start with our vision at Catabasis and an introduction to why we are studying Edisolinexant, as well as the previous clinical trial results with Edisolinexant. I'll introduce Maria Mancini, our VP of Clinical Operations, to review our Phase three Polaris DMD trial in detail and then I will wrap up with our goals for the future. We'll be happy then to take any questions that you may have. A great deal of progress has been made for those affected by Duchenne over the last 30 years, and in particular over the last several years. We have companies attempting to restore dystrophin by targeting specific mutations, companies working to replace the defective gene with dystrophin similar to that in Becker muscular dystrophy, and we have companies like Catabasis that are targeting the underlying pathways that drive disease progression. But the work must continue. We need therapies that benefit all people affected by Duchenne, that slow progression of the disease in skeletal muscle, and also address the underlying cardiomyopathy. And we need therapies that will improve the quality of life and address what is important to those affected by Duchenne. Our vision with Edisolinexant is to benefit everyone that's affected by Duchenne at each stage in their lives. We are starting with early intervention in the four to seven year old boys because we believe that starting treatment early will provide the largest opportunity for benefit. As part of our development plan, we also plan to expand our clinical development to the rest of Duchenne community, including older boys and men affected by Duchenne. We understand that there is a broad community of individuals affected, and we believe that Edisolinexant has the potential to improve function both of cardiac and skeletal muscle for all of them. Additionally, we recognize that Duchenne is a disease that's unlikely to be cured by a single agent. We believe that Edasa has great potential benefit on its own, as well as in combination with other agents. We have and will continue to study ADASA in combination with agents such as dystrophin-targeted therapies like exon skipping and gene therapy where it may enhance their efficacy. At Catabasis, we are taking an innovative and wide-ranging approach to treating Duchenne by targeting the underlying pathways that drive disease progression. In Duchenne, the lack of dystrophin combined with mechanical stress, activates NF-kappa B. When activated, NF-kappa B has multiple negative effects. It promotes inflammation and fibrosis, muscle fiber degeneration, and it also suppresses muscle regeneration. 
This all leads to Duchenne disease progression and damage to the muscle with worsening function. Etosolinexant is an oral therapy designed to inhibit NF-kappa-V. With ADASA, we have seen evidence that by inhibiting NF-kappa-V, we're able to decrease inflammation and fibrosis, as well as decrease muscle degeneration while increasing muscle regeneration. The impact on these processes has great potential benefit in Duchenne, and we've seen preserved muscle function as well as substantially slowed disease progression in the clinic with EDASA. And I'll review these results in more detail shortly. We've targeted NF-kappa-V because of the potential for broad therapeutic benefit in Duchenne. NF-kappa-V is known to be a key link between the loss of dystrophin and disease manifestations and progression in Duchenne. NF-kappa-B is chronically turned on in Duchenne and is doing damage in multiple parts of the body, including the skeletal muscle, the heart, and in the bone even before steroids. By inhibiting NF-kappa-B, we believe that ADASA will preserve skeletal muscle function as well as have potential benefits on the heart and bone health. We're studying ADASA in boys that have not been on steroids recently, as there is a partial overlap in mechanism between etosolinexant and steroids targeting NF-kappa-B. In our clinical trials, we're looking to understand the effects of etosolinexant on its own primarily. Now, as you know, clinical trials are complex, and we look at the effects of a drug at multiple different levels. In the MOVE DMD Phase 2, an open-label study, the study that I'll talk about, we studied ADASA in boys affected by Duchenne and have learned a great deal to help design our Phase 3 Polaris DMD trial. In the MOVE DMD trial, we enrolled 31 boys aged 4 to 7 up to their 8th birthday who had not been on steroids for at least 6 months. We were able to see that oral ADASA, going from left to right, it inhibited NF-kappa-V in cells, as we had previously seen in animal studies, and we saw that inhibition increases as the dose of ADASA increases. We looked for the effects of ADASA on biomarkers in the blood, and we saw significant improvements in a biomarker of inflammation and in muscle enzymes. This is good confirmation that etosolinexant is working the way we expect it to work in people. Importantly, and something we're very excited about, is that we've seen a normalization of the elevated heart rate in boys with Duchenne with ADASA treatment. We've also seen improvements in muscle MRI, and most importantly, this translated into preservation of function on functional tests compared with how the boys were doing during an off-treatment period. I'll now walk through those clinical results in more detail. Here are the results of the North Star ambulatory assessment that we performed in the MOVE DMD trial for the boys that received 100 milligrams per kilogram per day of the drug. Let me walk you through this graph. Horizontally, or along the bottom of the graph, is the number of weeks since the boys started on ADASA. So the white area with the negative numbers is actually before they started, and the green area is after they started, now out to a year and a half. On the scale on the left, the vertical scale, you see the North Star Ambulatory Assessment score that you're familiar with. During the period before the boys started on ADASA, the gray line shows that their average change in their score which was decreasing over that time period. When they started on ADASA, they were stabilized. We saw this also for the other functional measures that you're probably used to performing uh, when you see the doctor. At running or walking 10 meters, climbing four stairs, and getting up from lying flat. You can see here that we saw preservation of muscle function and a substantial slowing of disease progression across all four assessments of physical function. ADASA changed the trajectory of disease progression from what was going on before they started ADASA. 
This preservation of muscle function, shown by the green horizontal lines, was observed through now 72 weeks of treatment. At this point, there are boys that have been participating in the MOVE DMD trial for more than two years. There are boys participating that are 10 years old, they're continuing to walk, and we're very happy to hear from their families that they're doing well. For example, we heard that a boy receiving ADASA in the MOVE DMD trial started being able to climb the stairs alternating both legs for the first time. He was also able to pick up items from the floor without using the Gowers maneuver, something he had consistently been using previously. While these are anecdotal cases, it's also reflected in the whole group of boys as is shown with the flat green line with preserved muscle function over a year and a half and stabilized disease progression. Next, we have the MRI T2 results. An advantage of the MRI T2 measurement is that it provides an objective and non-invasive way to assess disease progression in Duchenne. MRI T2 as a measure of muscle health reflects muscle inflammation as well as the fat content of the muscle. We're very thankful to the Imaging DMD consortium that we work with. It has been supported by PPMD initially, and they have done an enormous amount of work to collect natural history data with MRI. We've also been able to use their excellent protocols and standardization that enabled the, co the collection of really robust MRI data in the MOVE DMD study. We know that as MRI T2 in the lower leg muscle goes up, the gray bar function gets worse. And that's exactly what we saw was happening before the boys started taking ADASA. We observed an increase in the MRI T2 there, almost four milliseconds per year, before the boys were on treatment. The graph shows the muscle improvements that were captured by the MRI T2 assessment with ADASA significantly improving the rate of change of MRI T2 at all of the treated time points compared to the off-treatment period. At each of the time points, ADASA produced a significant improvement in the MRI T2 score compared to the off-treatment period. As I mentioned, in addition to the improvements of assessments of muscle function in MRI, ADASA also significantly improved biomarkers of muscle health and inflammation in the MOVE DMD trial. These included CRP, a, a global measure of inflammation, as well as all four of the muscle enzymes that we measured, which included creatine kinase, or CK. We were very pleased to see the durability of these results uh, over the course of ADASA treatment, supporting positive effects on muscle integrity and that the muscle enzymes and assessments of physical function are all moving in the desired direction uh, on treatment. You can also see here the heart rate results. As you know, cardiomyopathy is a tremendous concern in Duchenne and, in fact, the leading cause of mortality. The first sign that we see in boys is a heart rate that is higher than that in unaffected boys. And this stays high as they get older. The next sign is the development of fibrosis or scarring in the heart. And that's more likely to happen in the boys that have higher heart rates. As anticipated, the boys that were enrolled in the MOVE DMD trial had an elevated resting heart rate. Following initiation of the solid exit, we saw that the heart rate was significantly reduced from about 99 beats per minute to about 93 beats per minute. This is actually the average heart rate for boys in this age range that are not affected by Duchenne, which is encouraging, and it's something that we're going to be following up on in the phase three study. Now, many of you are familiar with the extensive side effects of chronic high-dose steroids. We've heard from those affected by Duchenne and their families about their experiences with weight gain, how they stop growing taller, challenges with behavior, and the experience of even having cataract surgery at ages as young as 10. The impact of delayed puberty and being mistaken for younger than, than boys are. 
We've heard from treating physicians how much of the current standard of care guidelines for Duchenne are actually directed towards the treatment of the extensive steroid side effects. We'd love to be able to eliminate the need for high-dose long-term steroid usage in Duchenne. We've seen that Edasa has been very well tolerated to date without safety signals and with no steroid-associated side effects. The most common adverse events have been gastrointestinal, usually described as loose stools. We've been very happy to see that boys taking Edasa have been growing similarly to unaffected boys, moving along their growth curves as expected for their age without any excessive weight gain, and they're continuing to gain height. This graph shows the percentiles for BMI for the boys in the trial based on the percentages for boys unaffected by Duchenne. When they started on Adasa, their BMI was above average, and you'll see that their BMIs have actually trended down over the year and a half that they've been taking Adasa towards the 50th percentile. Perhaps this is because they're a little bit more active. The last point I want to make on the MOVE DMD study is that we enormously appreciate the efforts and the contributions of the boys and their families. We know this is a burden. They've participated and they continue to participate in the MOVE DMD trial. We'd also like to thank the clinical trial study staff that have made all of this progress uh, with ADASA possible. So now jo- Joanne, can I just quick ask one question? I think that's before we move on to Polaris, the question that came up about the new DMD trial, I think it's slide 10. When you had that run-in period and you were able to show boys off treatment and you had mm-hmm. some North Star data, is that the, you, you actually measured the boys before they were put on treatment. Is that a correct? That's or is exactly, that, okay. That's okay. exactly right, Abby. We measured them in an early part of the study where we only gave a few doses before that, and then we measured them before they went on ADASA for the long term. So we were able to, you know, there's a lot of variability from from each each boy to, to each other. And so one of, of the opportunities that that gave us is to be able to compare what happened off treatment in the same boys to on treatment in the same boys. Okay. And then when they then those boys went on treatment, there was no control arm, this is open label. So they oh, this shows what happened from the time they started on treatment. Yes. Right, yeah. It was yes. But they all went on treatment, so there wasn't some that main so that dash line is just the continuation of the slope of the line. Exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we're going to move on to um, the phase two, phase three Polaris DMD trial. Thanks for helping clarify that. Um, so on this slide, we have the design of the Polaris trial. We are planning to enroll about 125 boys aged four to seven, so before their eighth birthday, and who have not been on steroids for at least six months. My colleague, Maria Mancini, will now walk through the Polaris DMD trial in more detail. Thank you, Joanne, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to share more information about our Polaris DMD trial. This trial is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial where two boys will receive etosalinexin for each boy that receives placebo. We realize that placebo is an unfortunate reality of clinical trials and will minimize it as much as we can by using a two-to-one randomization so that two-thirds of boys will receive the DASA right away. We intend to have an open-label extension so that all boys have the opportunity to receive a DASA after they complete the Polaris DMD trial. We have heard from many in the Duchenne community about the burden of trial participation, so we tried to minimize site visits and patient travel where possible. Site visits are every three months in this trial, which is largely possible due to the good safety profile of ADASA. We have also streamlined the tasks that will be performed at each visit, balancing these activities with the assessments that we believe will be the most informative for learning about etosalinexin in this trial. I'd like to walk through a summary of the inclusion criteria for the Polaris trial. 
Many of the criteria are fairly straightforward in terms of consent and assent requirements and documentation of the Duchenne diagnosis. Additional criteria include the ability to perform the time function tasks that are performed as part of the trial, being followed by someone who coordinates Duchenne care, and the ability to swallow the capsules. As Joanne mentioned, we are enrolling boys that are four to seven years old, just up to the eighth birthday at the time of consent. And here we have a summary of the exclusion criteria for the trial. We already mentioned that we are enrolling boys that have not taken steroids for at least the past six months. However, inhaled or topical corticosteroids are fine. We are not able to enroll boys who are currently on other investigational therapies. However, we are able to enroll boys that are on a stable dose of the approved therapy, Exondas 51. Boys have been taking Adasa and Exondas 51 at the same time in the MOVE DMD trial with good safety results, and we have preclinical results showing that Adasa increased the amount of dystrophin produced by the exon skipping therapy. We are looking forward to learning more about the combination of these therapies in the Polaris trial. There are other medical conditions or recent treatments which are part of the exclusion criteria mentioned here. More information on the Polaris DMD trial is available on clinicaltrials.gov. In terms of the key assessments for the Polaris DMD trial, the primary endpoint is the North Star Ambulatory Assessment. We named this trial Polaris because it is the brightest star in its constellation and is also known as the North Star. Some of you may be familiar with the North Star. It's a test that was designed specifically for Duchenne that is comprehensive in evaluating a range of 17 different measures. A trained clinical evaluator will work with each boy to assess the performance of these functional tests over the course of the trial. The primary endpoint for this trial is the North Star Ambulatory Assessment Score after 12 months of ADASA treatment compared to placebo. The key secondary endpoints are the age-appropriate time function tests, the 10-meter walk run, the four stair climb, and time to rise. You may notice that these are the same four functional assessments that we performed during the MOVE DMD trial. These assessments will be performed every three months when participants visit the site for the Polaris trial. One thing to note is that we are not performing the six-minute walk test in the Polaris trial, and boys will not need to get MRIs or any muscle biopsies. We will also be looking at assessments of growth, as we see that this is an important differentiator of adapted treatment. We saw in the MOVE DMD trial that boys continued along their expected growth curves which is not the case for treatment with steroids. We will be collecting height and weight at each of the clinic visits. Additionally, by inhibiting NF-kappa-B, we believe that etacelinexin may have beneficial effects on cardiac and bone health in Duchenne, and therefore, we'll be periodically monitoring bone and heart health in this trial. We have seen preliminary clinical as well as preclinical results that support the potential benefits of ADASA on the heart in Duchenne, and preclinical results that ADASA does not have the detrimental effects on bone health associated with steroids. Our goal with the cardiac monitor is to minimize the burden on the boys and their families. We will use a small adhesive monitor that will be applied at the site and then worn at home for a couple of days at three points during the trial. This will enable us to gather important data about both heart rate and heart rate variability while the boys are at home. This will provide information about how ADASA may impact heart health in this age range of boys. Recently, updated care guidelines stress the importance of monitoring bone health in Duchenne. Vertebral or spine fractures can occur at a young age, particularly after initiating steroid treatment, and can be asymptomatic. Further, they make it more likely for the boy to have another fracture. As part of the standard of care, x-rays of the spine and bone mineral density measured by a DEXA machine is recommended at baseline in boys with Duchenne. We are including both of these bone assessments as part of the Polaris DMD trial 
so that boys have the opportunity to assess their bone health in this early age range and to monitor any changes as they grow. <clears throat> Turning to the study drug, Cetosolinexin is provided as a gel capsule, and that dose is 100 mg per kg per day. Boys will take the capsules three times per day with food that has some fat, such as a glass of whole milk. For example, for a boy that is 20 kilograms or 44 pounds, he would typically take two capsules in the morning, two capsules midday, and four capsules in the evening. We have two sizes of capsules so boys can determine which size works better. Practicing swallowing the placebo capsules occurs during the screening visit, but families are encouraged to practice swallowing before coming to the site. We will provide many straws to the trial sites, which enable the boys to learn the feeling of swallowing the capsules while drinking the liquid through a straw. We were glad to see that the boys in the Phase 2 MoveDMD trial did very well with capsule swallowing. Another way that we have minimized trial burden on participating families is by having almost 40 trial sites globally in hopes that most of the families that are interested in participating will have a site close to where they live. This map of the U.S. and Canada shows the approximately 25 sites that we expect to have in North America. The first two sites are active and enrolling patients with additional sites to be active in the coming weeks. We also expect to have trial sites in Europe, Australia, and Israel, and expect that they will be open for enrollment next year. We will share information about additional sites on social media, on our website, and on clinicaltrials.gov, so these are good places to check for interim updates. The cost of travel for both the parent and patient will be provided by Catabasis. And now, I will pass things back to Joanne for the last section. Thank you, Maria. We believe that Edisol and Exent and the Polaris DMD trial may be a good fit for many boys affected by Duchenne and their families. We very much appreciate the positive interest that we've gotten from the Duchenne community about the Polaris DMD trial. As we've reviewed today, we have seen positive results with Adasa in the clinic consistent with the preservation of muscle function and are pleased with the safety and tolerability profile and the absence of steroid-associated side effects, as Adasa is not a steroid or steroid analog. We've designed our Polaris DMD trial with the objective of minimizing the burden on participating families as much as possible, with clinical trial site visits every three months. We'll be covering the cost of travel to the trial sites, including for the screening visits. There has been strong interest from families participating in MOVE DMD trials to also include siblings of boys in the MOVE DMD trial, and we anticipate being able to do so in 2019, and we'll be sharing more information about these plans uh, in the coming months. In summary, we're developing Edisol and Exent as a potential new standard of care for Duchenne. Edisolinexant is an oral therapy that's demonstrated preserved muscle function in young boys with Duchenne in our MOVE DMD trial. Our vision for Adasa is to treat all people affected by Duchenne regardless of mutation from the time of diagnosis throughout their lifetime. Importantly, Adasa has the potential to benefit both the skeletal and cardiac muscle disease in Duchenne. And while we're developing Adasa to be taken on its own, we also believe it has great potential to work in combination with other therapies. In some cases, like exon skipping and potentially gene therapy, Adasa could even enhance the activity of these dystrophin-targeted therapies. As we've talked about earlier, Adasa has a favorable safety and tolerability profile that could help boys continue to grow and mature like their unaffected peers. Before we wrap up, I'd like to quickly introduce uh, on the slide the rest of our Catabasis team located in Cambridge, Mass. At Catabasis, our mission is to make a difference in the lives of patients and their families. Our lead program and the current focus of our company is Edisol and Exent. We're developing Adasa to treat all patients affected by Duchenne, and we are passionate about our work. 
We are grateful to all of the Duchesne community members that we've met over the years and how they have helped us to understand how best to develop a potential new therapy. And finally, thank you so much to PPMD for the opportunity to have today's webinar and to share information about ADASA and our Phase three trial with all of you. We deeply appreciate all the support and guidance that PPMD has provided to us over the years. Thank you, for everyone, for joining today's webinar. Uh, you're welcome to email our clinical team with any questions. And as you see there, we can be reached at PPMD trial uh, at Catabasis. Dot com. We are providing frequent updates on Edith Allen Excellent and the trial, so please feel free to follow us on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, and if you're interested in seeing these updates, you can also find more information on our website and clinicaltrials.gov. There's also an opportunity on our website to sign up to re receive the uh, quarterly uh, newsletter and information updates about ADASA. So I'd be happy to take any questions at this time um, about ADASA or the Polaris DMD trial. And for those of you that may be listening uh, to this later as a recording, please feel free to email us with questions uh, at dmdtrials at catabasis.com. So thank you. Thank you, Joanne and Maria. That was really wonderful. I think this is uh, you've really uh, some exciting data and a great trial design for going forward. It's a it's a really good opportunity. Um, we do have some questions that have come in. Um, and first of all, I guess I want to you know you've positioned this as this is going to benefit all boys. And when I think of all boys, I think of ambulatory and non-ambulatory. Can you talk a little bit about your vision for you know where this yeah. might end up? In terms of that, absolutely. Um, we know that um, that there are there's a great need in, in the non-ambulatory population, and particularly with the potential for cardiac benefits, we would love to see um, ADASA in clinical trials there. So we are, are working on planning that. That is part of our clinical plan. We're not um, we, we're not in a position right now to announce that, uh, but we see it as very important. So you're thinking about it, yeah. Okay, great. Um, and another question that came up, and actually, um, so clearly you're also positioning this to be a, 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 a you know a way to deal with the inflammation other than steroids and avoid mm -hmm. all the side effects. So was there ever thought, and um, I know this changes trial design, but this is also a question some folks had about doing any kind of a head-to-head -head comparison with mm -hmm. steroids or prednisone. Why yeah, or why not? That's, yeah, and that, that's a, a good question. Uh, one of the things, the, a couple of the things that we've incorporated in the trial uh, are to kind of make those safety comparisons with, um, uh, with, uh, with DASA, looking at things like growth, bone development, uh, and also the cardiac. What we um, will, you know, longer term, yes, that is uh, something to consider and what we need to do first is, is for registration is to look at it versus placebo. Um, and then as we have more information in terms of being able to design that study with steroids, um, we'll go there and okay. work that out. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So, and also in terms of the design of the Polaris trial, and I know um, basically a, a, a parent might be faced, a family might be faced with, you know, they could enroll in the trial, but there's a third of the chance, a 33% chance they might end up with, with placebo. So it's that risk versus going on, um, you know, so they essentially would get nothing for that year or they could be on steroids. So how, is there a way to quantify what, decline you, a, a patient, a boy might experience in that year if they did get on that, that yeah. placebo arm, or is it too individual and too variable at that, at that age? So we, uh, in talking also with the experts, you know, how do we, how do we address that and minimize that? Because we know mm -hmm. we, we are kind of stuck with having a placebo from, from the FDA point of view, mm -hmm. um, but we also want to make sure that the boys are in good shape. Uh, for the study. And that's one of the reasons why with the inclusion criteria, we have made certain inclusion criteria about, for example, how quickly they can 
um, stand from supine. And we know that um, as long as they're within that group, they are not, they are, are unlikely to decline um, uh, in a meaningful way over the next year. So after that year, they are eligible, we'll have an open label study to continue on uh, with ADASA. Uh, just as we have with the um, the move DMD, we've continued an open label, and in in fact, what we are are doing in that open label uh, part of the study is also including the boys um, who have been in the open label part of move DMD. So it'll be it's a change in the title of the the, um, the study, but they'll also be able to continue long term on Adasa. Okay, okay, and are there um, are there going to be, you know, again, time is what is so important to Duchenne mm-hmm. families. Just every second matters, and, you know, over a six-month period, your boy could lose another milestone. Um, is there going to be any kind of, you know, interim analysis to um, to look at either fertility or positive results, like super positive results, and, um, you know, adjust accordingly? Yeah. So the um, the Data Safety Monitoring Board, which is made up of experts uh, in Duchesne, and there's also a, a parent representative on that board, um, they will uh, follow the data uh, periodically to look at uh, both safety as well as efficacy and then advise the company on any changes because they'll be able to see the data in an unblinded fashion they would then be able to advise the, the company on any changes in design that they would recommend. But we, of course, won't see the data. It would be they would um, see that in an unblinded uh, fashion. Right. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm muddling this one through my head. It's about data sharing, and this is obviously a big, a big topic in just in general in drug development and especially rare diseases this day, but it, these days the question came up about if, you know, these quarterly visits that they're having and all these, um, you know, the North Star and sometimes function tests are being assessed, is there any thought, can, can families, can patients see that, those results, or yeah. is that considered study results and they'll, you know, it will be, uh, only, it, that'll be considered unblinding if you gave it then? Yes. So uh, ultimately, and what, in fact, there's a lot of new information um, uh, in the, the research committee com- community coming out about comparing the placebo groups of, um, of clinical trials, and that's an important source of natural history data uh, for the community, for researchers in the future. Um, So uh, after, and that's typically shared after the trial is complete and there's a a complete data set. So absolutely, that that would be, that's our intention to be, to share that with the community. Okay. And you mentioned something about the move, the MD boys being able to roll over into this you know, renamed open label extension. So those, so I guess the move DMD is about 150 weeks. So will they be eligible to enroll in this trial or they just continue on drug and be rolled over into that new OLE? Is that how it will work? No, they wouldn't enroll in the study. They would, con- they would continue on the, on the drug, on ADASA as they have been in the okay. open label. And they would move over, but they, we would just follow them in the open label. Right. Uh, okay. Part of the okay. study. Um, and so there'll, and be we more, have, there'll be more sites too, which will be more, hopefully more convenient for them. Yeah. There's, um, you have a lot of sites that are opening. That's great. Um, so I think the, the, um, you're really interesting, the ability to have the Atelperson patients, um, participate in this trial and your whole vision for it being able to be, um, you know, anything that's just been modifying, just been, just been producing use in conjunction with that. So what about, and that includes gene therapy. Do you see going forward that if gene therapy is successful, that EDASA might be able to use in conjunction, conjunct combination? I think all of the, almost all of the current trials in, uh, and I know all, all of the current gene uh, therapy trials are using uh, steroids as a baseline. Um, it, so they are all looking um at steroids, and I think that um, potentially um, avoiding the use of steroids is a really important piece of the overall treatment puzzle. Um, it's not enough just to to 
to uh, develop therapies but still have the steroid uh, piece there. It, it, we actually did a study, um, a preclinical study in mice um, a, with Sarepta. And what we, the reason that we did that is one of the other effects of NF-kappa B that I didn't mention is that when it is activated, it actually decreases the amount of dystrophin that is uh, made. And that's not relevant necessarily to the boys in the study who don't have dystrophin, but if they're on exon skipping, they do have some dystrophin. So that would potentially increase the amount of, of dystrophin. That's a, a long story, I realize. But what mm -hmm. we did see in the mice is that when you combined an exon skipping agent plus Adasa, there was more dystrophin than if you just gave the exon skipping agent alone. So mm -hmm. that, one of, that was the reason for then including the boys on a Teplerson uh, in right. uh, the Move DMD study or allowing them to start on a Teplerson. And you think that mechanism will spill over not only to gene therapy, too? Right? Uh, it, it has the potential to. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a question about the open label. Are they, so the move DMD boys that are on the open label, are they still going to be required to go to a three-month visit for assessment? Good question. And we are, they later, when they've been on it for a while, they go to a six-month visit. Um, okay. So, but that's that's more in the details of the um, the open label, and we'll be announcing all of that um, uh, in the uh, beginning part of the year. Okay. So you ha you haven't started enrolling that. You're just at the very no. beginning of getting sites activated. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, and if you are interested in participating, do what's the process to have the child assessed? Is it you have to find? You can look at that map and find a site that's going to be enrolling. Find the nearest one, go there, just that's the process. Yeah. Wait, yeah. let Maria answer that. Yeah, yeah okay. that's a great question, Abby. So um, many of the families we hear from come through the um, DMD trials at catabasis.com, and our process is typically to just understand their location, and then we um, connect them with a the site as the site is becoming active. And then we really fully hand that family over to the site, and then the site can begin pre-screening activities. Okay. Um, so here is a question about actually uh, the results of the trial. Is it possible to quantify the amount of percentage to which the drug inhibits NS-kappa B? So I guess it's talking about the biological mechanism, not necessarily the clinical outcomes. Yeah, we have measured that um, in adults in the phase one, uh, and we've seen uh, that uh, that IDASA inhibits NF kappa B by about seventy percent. Uh, in animal models, even fifty percent is enough to make a um, significant uh, change in the way the animals function and in the way the muscles look under the microscope. So, I, so we believe that we have um, sufficient suppression or inhibition of NF-kappa B to have a, a therapeutic effect, and we've shown that in the boys in terms of the, the genes that are turned that are um, uh, that are activated by NF-kappa B, we see those turned off uh, in the uh, blood of the boys that were uh, in the MOVE DMD trial as well. Okay. Um, uh, there's one last question here. It's kind of an interesting one. It's about um, comparing. So um, have you ever compared Idasa's ability to inhibit NF-kappa B to that of the omega-3 fatty acid? Um, and that, the reason that somebody is asking that is because the omega-3 uh, is, uh, is uh, part of the molecule. Part of it. It's uh, hooked together, and um, so that's kind of where it, one of the, the, the pieces it's made from chemically. And it's much stronger at inhibiting NF-kappa B than the omega-3 fatty acid. Right, because if you did your preclinical pre work correctly, you would have known that, you know, that neither of the components are as good as the combination. Yeah. Um, 
Let's see. Well, there's no more questions that have come up. I just think this is a very exciting program and uh, really looking forward to um, to getting it going and seeing the results. Yes. Yes, we there, are. There, we are too. There, and, and it's only because of all of the, the contributions of of many uh, to get here. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this has been a great, great collaborative program to work with you on. I'm so glad to, to see the progress you've made. Uh, so here's a question about how soon do you accept this, accept, uh, uh, or uh, expect the uh, trial to begin? Uh, so Maria? Yep. So we are actively identifying patients. So screening has begun for this trial, and we expect – um, all of our U.S. sites, there will be, they'll, you know, it will take some time, but they will be all up um, by the beginning of next year. And there, are, this is not a mutation-specific uh, okay. trial, okay. but you do have to have confirmed um, GMD, Duchenne. So okay. there's a question about if there's going to be any DNA screening done by the trial. Uh, we found uh, previously that that almost everybody already knew their mut- mutation, and we do collect that that information, um, so we know what the background information is on patients in the study. Um, we had people with boys with lots of different mutations, um, and so that is is um, is has been usually available, uh, and if not. Um, then in any case, they should know what the mutation is. Everybody should know what the mutation is. Right. Right. And you don't expect there to be any difference in in outcomes mm-hmm. for different types of mutations? Um, we don't. No, we, we don't. Okay. So, so, yeah, we are. So we're excited to be up and running and the, the first sites that are actively uh, in, enrolling patients and uh, – uh, we look forward to uh, more sites being activated, as Maria says. We, we see more of them up uh, over the uh, coming weeks, and that will be on our website as well as on clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, on our website, there's a map showing where sites are. And just so, I, so I hope in, you know, a year or two, we will be hearing from you back again about some, some interim results. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Or even, yeah, okay. All right. There's a... Um, uh, here's a question. We're, uh, I think this, I think, uh, you'll answer this one offline. I think they need to, uh, coordinate, coordinate offline for this one. So I want to thank everybody, Maria and Joanne especially, for being on the phone and all the listeners. Um, again, this will be posted very soon. And if you have questions, there's an email address right there on the screen. And we're just so glad you were able to join us today. So thanks everybody.